I'm Bruce. I'm Eric. And we're the chef and owners of Blue Ribbon Restaurants in New York, in Miami. Las Vegas and, and Los Angeles. Yeah. The dish we're going to make for you today is what connects us to both Cordon Bleu and to Paris, and it's bone marrow with oxtail marmalade. We choose beef marrow bones from the humerus, right? Yeah. So what we find is that it gives us really nice marrow all the way through. There's not a lot of cartilage. But the first step, which is a bit of a lengthy step, is putting these bones into salted water. And this is gonna take anywhere from 36 to 48, even 72 hours. We add the salt in and a good amount of salt. That's a quarter cup of salt for the four cups and we're just gonna mix it together. The salt is basically gonna do this process of degorging the bones. It's gonna pull all the impurities out. So at this point, we're just gonna put these into the refrigerator for around two days. The beginnings of the original Blue Ribbon, we just wanted to make a restaurant that we wanted to go to, that resonated with us. That's kind of, in a sense, how we came up with the name Blue Ribbon, how it related back to our time at Le Cordon Bleu in Paris, why we decided to go to Cordon Bleu. Um, I think, well, Eric went first. And for me, it was, if you want to learn French food and you want to learn from the best, you go to the best. I loved school. I think we both absolutely loved school. The teachers, everyone was just kind of an amazing, Part of the experience. All right, so these bones have now been degorging for a couple of days and you'll see that the marrow itself has a much nicer color. The next step in this dish is cooking the oxtail. Oxtail is kind of an amazing and underutilized piece of meat. We trim just a little bit, we just want to make sure it's not excessively fatty. We put our oxtail into the pot and then we're gonna add in our garlic and thyme. So we take one head of garlic, cut it right in half, throw it into the pot. Here we have one bunch of thyme, not picked, just the whole thing goes straight into the pot. We're gonna, it's pretty traditional uh, garniture aromatique. We don't add in the carrots and shallots at this point. We cook this stew in a lot of wine. It gives it an incredibly rich body balance and this is all going to cook down and create a really rich product at the end. And then Eric is going to add in the chicken stock that we made prior to, to a little bit more than cover the oxtail. And then once it comes to a boil, we're going to turn it down to a simmer and we're going to let it simmer for three to three and a half, sometimes four hours. But what we want is the oxtail to basically be falling off the bone. All right, we're seeing that it's reduced quite a bit. And also the meat is very tender. The meat is very close to falling off the bone, kind of the perfect texture that we want. So we're now gonna remove the oxtail and we're gonna let it cool because if we try to cut the oxtail when it's too hot, it all just kind of shreds and falls apart. All right, so our oxtail's been out of the liquid for a little bit. It's cool enough for us to handle. So you can do this either with your fingers, and what happens is you wind up with just this kind of perfect cleaned bone. Then we're just gonna try to cut this meat and keep it cubed. It's really more in the style of the traditional beef bourguignon that we learned at Cordon Bleu. We're just cutting everything a bit smaller. So our strained stock has been reducing for about three hours. We've achieved the perfect taste, but it, the sauce is a little too thin. So we're gonna use something called Bermagne, which is uncooked flour and a softened butter in equal quantities. And we still haven't seasoned the sauce yet, but this is just gonna add a nice buttery texture. And Eric, you wanna scrape a little bit of that out. And we won't add it all right in the beginning, but it's important that the sauce is boiling at this point, because if we don't properly cook the flour, you wind up with a little bit of a chalky flavor in your finished sauce. Our stew is cooked, our broth is strained and thickened and simmering. Now we're gonna create the marmalade portion of the dish. So we're gonna start with butter. And then we're gonna add our carrots and shallots into the pan. 
And we're also gonna add a pinch of salt. The salt's gonna bring out the liquids in both the shallots and the carrots. And it's gonna kind of slow down the browning process, but it's gonna increase the sweating of the vegetables. It creates a little bit of liquid, makes everything a little bit sweeter. We are now gonna add in our sugar, and we have two different sugars. We're gonna add in brown sugar, white sugar, red wine vinegar, and we are gonna add in our port. And then we're gonna want this really to candy. And as the vinegar, the port, and all those sugars cook together, we wind up with kind of a vegetable marmalade that we mix into the beef stew. Okay. So this has now been reducing for about 45 minutes and it's kind of an unbelievable transformation. The next step is going to be really combining everything and bringing the whole dish together. We're going to add in our chopped and cooled oxtail. And then the last step is going to be us adding in our thickened stock. All that is left for us to do really is to slightly reduce this to the exact consistency we want and add a little bit of the salt and pepper just to make sure our seasoning is perfect. All right, getting near the end. Now we are cooking the bones. So the bones just out of the refrigerator. We want to pour cold water over the bones and then we're going to add salt into the water and we're basically just going to bring these up to a simmer. So it is important not to boil the water with the bones. You start with that cold water, you bring it up and as soon as it starts to simmer, you turn it down. You do not want it to boil. If it rapidly boils, it's going to break down the marrow that sits in the bone and you're going to wind up with shriveled little pieces of marrow, which nobody wants. Once it's warmed through, we'll insert a knife into the center of the marrow. Once that center is warm, then it's cooked. Maybe the best advice we ever had was to pay attention to the basics. Eric and I think of Cordon Bleu, we think of our training, we think of the simple basic dish, how you get to a delicious product, how you cook something right every single time. We strive for consistency every day and you can only really get there if you understand the basics. Well done.